Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Austin. And recently we got the great opportunity from the nice folks at DJI to check out one of their new goggles coming out very soon. Yeah, so these uh, DJI goggles, they've been announced for a long time. I believe they were at the, actually at the Mavic announcement um, and they're finally getting released and we got the chance to have it get a couple of them a little bit early and to check them out and uh, kind of reported you guys on what, yeah. um, what you think. Now, if you want to see our first impression, we're going to have a link down to the vlog where we had a blast. It was kind of a down day. We got these goggles in and we had so much fun trying them out. Very intuitive. Check out that first impression, but we've lived with these now for almost a week and we want to share our experience with you and give you a really in-depth review. Yeah, our goal is just to roll down through some of the features and some of the questions that we know that people have about these. You know, this is um, a $449 investment and so obviously if you're considering purchasing one of these, you're going to want all the info. So we're going to try to roll through that. So the first one's comfort. How, how comfortable are these? <laughs> Incredibly comfortable. Um, one thing that we noticed here is that it's actually bigger than the Mavic itself, <laughs> which we're kind of laughing about, but when you put it on your head, it didn't feel bulky or big. And one thing we really liked is I have an abnormally small head. Alex probably has the biggest head in the, in the <laughs> company and they fit us both wonderfully. We yeah. had a really good experience. The way it grips is it grips high on the forehead and kind of low on the back part of your head. And you're actually able to rotate the goggles up and out. One thing we noticed here is you didn't have a typical issues with goggles that kind of carry this format. And it really wasn't that big compared to it. Um, this is our head plate goggle, which a lot of people know and love. You can see the size comparison, how big it is. But one thing I don't really care about the head plate goggle is when you're wearing these, it just kind of gets a little sweaty. You know, a hot summer sun, you're wearing these straps all over your head. You know, it's really a nice, comfortable fit around your face, but it doesn't breathe very well. These actually breathe really well on the top of your head, the sides of your head, but also with my narrow head, a little bit of light leak, but it didn't reach actually where the sensor or where the image was. You could just kind of see a little bit of a brightness here. Everyone else with the wider frame heads, it fit perfectly as well. There's a uh, really good size battery in here that gives you about six hours of runtime on these goggles, and it's actually in the back part of the band, so it also balances really well. It's super comfortable. Alex described it best. He said it feels a lot like you're wearing a bicycle helmet. Yeah. And because the balance still feels good when you flip the, the screen up. Mm -hmm. So I think that it, you feel that nice, tight comfort on your head. Yeah. Now, a lot of people wear glasses, and a lot of different style glasses within our company. We pass the goggles around, and, and everyone's able to try them out. You can wear your stock glasses, even the wider frame ones, and it slips right over, and this outer little membrane is really, really comfortable. Now, a big factor for the size of the goggle, which is obviously not unsubstantial, yeah. is what's packed in there. Yeah. And so there's some really great optics. There's some really great stuff they're doing with the video transmission. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, there's actually two screens on their optics. What you'll notice here is a lot of screens with like head play style or screen style goggles, they have one big screen with a high resolution. Mm -hmm. This actually has two individual screens carrying a higher resolution than the single screens do, which means you kind of get in double the resolution because each eye is getting a higher resolution than the typical head play style. I think they're saying that each eye technically gets 19 by 20 and 1080 10, yes. by 1080, yep. um, which is, it feels really good. Like uh, you don't notice any lines. You notice, I mean, the transmission is extremely crisp. Yeah. Speaking of transmission, it's transmitting the 720 by 60. Mm -hmm. um, that's in smooth mode. Yes, that's in smooth mode. And then uh, it can also be in HD mode um, when it's nearby. And that's a 1080 by 30. Yeah. Um, and then when you go really far away, I believe it drops down to a 720 by 30. Correct. So it'll automatically do that. So when Whenever you're in HD mode and it goes away, it's going to go ahead and automatically kick you down. So you're not going to see that pixelation. In our first uh, experience that we had with this, one of the things we love doing is we're looking down at the leaves and you could actually see the detail of the leaves as you're flying over. Not when you're sitting stationary really close, but as you're flying over it. I feel like you can almost see the bug on the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> at one point when I had to uh, almost hit a tree, I did. And it was really a cool experience with that. You can see in such crisp detail, you actually forget that you're looking at a screen or wearing a goggle. It's like you're looking right out of the cockpit itself. The resolution of the uh, the actual goggles themselves is great. Um, a limiting factor on resolution is the quality of the transmission. Yeah. And so uh, that's something that I noticed. This is not using the light bridge technology. This is using the OcuSync technology, yeah. um, which we've always been really impressed with when you're looking at it on a phone. But it's just a whole nother level where you're yeah. seeing it without any light issues and it's just full crisp and HD and right in front of you. You really get to experience the benefit of the range and the clarity when you don't have the light issues shining off your cell phone uh, while you're trying to read that. And OcuSync is a really reliable link. Uh, we were actually racing around with these goofing off on your family's property. We were going from one end of the runway to the whole other end of the runway. We were even going through barns where it was behind us, through a barn, and then we went straight down the driveway where there's trees on both sides. We didn't lose connection at all. And your runway is what, a half a mile? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's an incredibly long distance with great connectivity. Um, one thing I also like about this is the fact that when you're looking at the image and everything, um, it doesn't have the stuttering. You know, a, a good solid image when you're moving you know, should flow really nice. And even in the 30 frames, when you move laterally in your yaw, you didn't get the stuttering that you typically get with HD signals. 
Yeah, something I always noticed with light bridge is you would get that digital blocking. Yeah. That would be kind of your breakup. And we got about a half a mile away and never really noticed Very that Very reliable. Um, they say that it has an 85 degree field of view, um, which I, th I think is what they say is that it equates to a 216 inch screen about 12 feet away. Okay. Which, that sounds about right. Very like immersive. Yeah, yeah, it's very immersive. It's really, you're really in there. Yeah. Um, a lot of people's eyes are different spaces. This also has an inner pupillary uh, that you oftentimes see on great goggles like Fat Shark and Zeiss, where you can move the pupils back and forth. Uh, there's a little roller bar that will move them both in and out. So you can focus it specifically to where your eyes are as well, which I think is a really great feature. So you have like a couple different factors. You have the quality of the screen that's in it. You have the quality of the transmission. The third issue that people are really gonna wanna know about is latency. Latency, yeah. They say directly from the goggles um, to the Mavic, which that's a nice thing is it's bypassing the control so it's a direct signal from the goggle to the Mavic. Uh, they say that's 110 milliseconds. So it's about a tenth of a second. Yeah, so that's that's not bad. I mean, when you consider um, kind of like analog FPV where just that millisecond makes all the difference, they're running about, I think, 25 to 50 milliseconds. Yeah. Um, and I think that the other HD system, such as the Connects Pro site, is right in that 50 millisecond range. Yeah. So really, it's only about double. And when you're going the speed of a Mavic, which is not very fast, Correct. I don't really think that that extra latency it's, really matters. Let's keep in mind, these are not meant for pure race quads. These are meant to capture AP and, and experience flying, especially with their new fixed wing mode, which is really cool. Uh, this is meant to give you enjoyment in flying. So um, this reminded me a lot when we used to fly off of GoPros. When you plug your GoPro in, it felt very similar to that. You know, you had a lag, but it wasn't something that you couldn't overcome as long as you weren't going too fast. So I don't think these are gonna be going through gates anytime yeah. soon without braking. Uh, but at the same time, we were still able to line up and go down, you know, full speed and sport mode right down a driveway and even chase after the guys in the golf cart and uh, and it was easy enough to control and make adjustments yeah there's latency and then there's discernible latency I really yeah. don't think there's a whole lot of discernible it's latency not a deal breaker here. in this one yeah a big determining factor I think that really sets the DJI goggles apart from any other HD goggle that I use is the menus the menus yeah. <laughs> it's crazy typically you'd have a set of goggles on you well your menus are on your screen you know usually you're touching your phone screen or you're touching your uh, remote to go in different menus the neat thing about this goggle is you can actually use all those functions by just simply using like a trackpad on the side and there's two key buttons underneath that take you in and out of functions. So you can do all the functionality, you can still use your remote, but you can also simply reach up and you can do finger swipes in different ways to get different modes. One thing that I was super impressed with is that they also link up all of the, um, and when we say menus, really anything that you can do in the controller, you can do in the goggles. Um, but I think is, is how I would use that feature the most is you can also use this toggle switch here on the Mavic remote controller and the function button so you can actually navigate all of the menus inside of your goggles without looking at your controller by using your controller, it's which I, crazy. I think that's a huge feature. And you can technically actually fly this and use all the functionality without using your cell phone now, which is gonna keep you from burning through your batteries really quick as well. So if you, you know, you're tired of your phone being dead, not being able to, uh, to fly very long because your cell phone dies so quick, you have the ability to just put your phone in your pocket and use all that functionality. But you're absolutely right, literally just reading it while you're flying is the way to go. And maybe this is obvious, but just from a user experience perspective, all of the data and all of the heads up display that you expect to see on your phone, that is all in the goggle. So all of that telemetry, mm -hmm. all of that information, your battery data, um, your signal data, your satellite data, all of that is in your goggles, just like you're used to seeing it on your screen. Yeah. Now, a couple key functions here that really set this apart, coupling with the DJI products. Their gimbal's amazing. And the ability to turn around and pan and use your little scrolls on the side to look down is really cool. But this actually has gyros in it as well. So you have advanced features like head tracking, which I think sets things to a whole nother level. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's just, it's exactly what you would expect, how you would expect oh. it to work. And there's two different forms of head tracking. Uh, one form of head tracking is where the gimbal is working separate from the actual flight control. So you're looking around and you're kind of like sitting on a tall tower or you're perched wherever you sit it and you're able to look around and when you go to your limits, it just stops there. But there's another feature where you can use head tracking to actually control the unit itself. And that is a really immersive experience. So as you're going forward, you can say, I wanna see this over here. And you just turn your head and the, the machine will slowly guide that direction. And it's very intuitive, it's very natural, it's not obtrusive, but while you're flying, you can look left, right, you can look down, and you're actually moving the machine and tracking with the machine. So it's moving to where you wanna go. And that's an amazing feature. So um, in order to initialize head tracking, you just do um, a two-fingered swipe down on the trackpad. It took me an embarrassing long time to figure that out, <laughs> but we'll save you guys the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, the biggest thing to keep in mind with head tracking is that when you first initialize it, you have that center point. Yeah. And um, that's where I think both of us got a little bit confused mm -hmm. as we were kind of turning around 
and then we would keep turning. We weren't yeah. really sure what that meant, but if you always return to that center point, that's yeah. when you can kind of like find your mobility in the flight yeah. mode. And say you find a body position where you're comfortable and you don't want to have to turn around. So say we're facing 180 degrees, we want to turn because maybe the sun's beating on us. We can turn around and with that same finger swipe motion, go to the head tracking menus, you can go all the way to the right and actually select to re-zero that. So say we want to turn around or we want to sit in a comfy chair and relax, we can re-zero that, it'll re-zero the gimbal and, and kind of calibrate your head to where it needs to be. Uh, speaking of that, there's a great feature on the Mavic called Tap to Focus. I love the fact that we could go to the function button, we could hit it once, we could look at whatever we want to focus on, whatever object, if it's a tree, and we can actually highlight it, tap it once, and it'll focus on that tree and do that beautiful foreground blurring, which is a really nice feature with the Mavic. Yep, absolutely. Now, a really cool feature about this is two screens can actually link up at the same time. So say you are flying for a client, a lot of times people use these Mavics and Inspires and Phantoms for professional use. You can actually give the client a set of goggles and let them preview the footage while you're flying a form. You still have access to all the menus, all the functionality, they're seeing a nice beautiful screen and being taken along for the ride. And that's a really cool feature about that. Yeah, you can have uh, one Mavic and you can have two goggles linked to it. The primary goggles can actually use the head tracking feature. Yeah. And then the uh, secondary goggles are just gonna be seeing what you're seeing. Um, but that's something we've been playing around with a little bit and I'm really excited to test that more. Really great preview feature. So early on we said that this was made for the Mavic. It's compatible with other models, but there may be something special you need to do. Right now with the OcuSync feature, you can sync right up with the Mavic. You have no cables, it's nice and light. But you can also do what, the Inspire 2? Yes, and, and then the, the Phantom 4 Pro and the Phantom 4 Plus are also yes. compatible. Uh, however, even this month and going forward, there's going to be announcements for more DJI products, you know, similar to the Mavic or perhaps mm -hmm. smaller. My guess is, is they're going to be building on OcuSync, yeah. you know, because this is a flagship standard blown product in my opinion, and to not build on that technology I think would be silly. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I think that if you're interested in this investment, this is not going to be the only product in the very near future that's going to be compatible with these goggles. Absolutely. Now if you do have the Inspire 2 or the Phantom 4 Pro or Pro Plus, um, you can actually just use a cable going from your remote to the goggles and that's how it's using. So not only those cords can go in, but there's also an HDMI slot where you can hook this up to your computer, you can preview your footage through an SD slot on the side. You can also watch movies on an airplane. So Josh, we've had a second just to kind of look at a bunch of details on this. What was just your personal experience? What did you enjoy about these? I like simplicity. This just flowed. So if you think about trying to get head tracking on anything, you have wires, you have programming, you have settings. All that gets really intimidating. And if you think about to get all those features on a typical goggle set, you'd have cables draped off of you, you'd have boxes in your pockets, it would be very awkward. The fact that you can have a six hour time with this and you just put it on your head and you go fly is amazing. It just takes away the stress. I mean, this hobby is supposed to be a lot of fun, you're supposed to have a good experience. This brings it to you. I, I almost think this is my preferred way to give somebody when they're not super familiar with like the hobby or what we're doing. Like this might be, the, I think, my preferred method just to show them what it's like, just what to have like? an experience of flight. Yeah. yeah, if you're already in the DJI ecosystem, you know that what they've been doing with price point and features has been ridiculous for a long time. I don't yeah. know how they do it, but really, I think you're going to have an awesome experience with these goggles. I mean, what do you say? Just knowing that they're you know fully compatible with the Mavic and just knowing that they're ex experience they're designed for. Dare we put a rating one out of ten on it? I would I would do an eight and a half to nine. <laughs> yeah, now here's yeah. the thing, I like everything. Uh, a lot of times people kind of look at us and like, why don't you read the directions first experience? Let's face it, 80% of us out there don't do that. They turn it on and start playing immediately. And that's why we want to always just unbox things, put them on our head and have that experience for you. But as we dig deeper into this, the features, the functionality, the ease of use, it's not disappointing us anywhere we go. And that head tracking feature, the flying feature, the focus features, um, yeah, I, the only reason I say eight and a half to nine is because where do they go from now? I can only imagine, but there needs to be room for that. Yeah, I agree. There always has to be room for improvement. I rate it very highly as well. Um, my biggest tip for somebody that's considering purchasing these is that it works how a DJI product you would expect it to work. Yeah. And I think that's what most people want to know is, is it going to work how I expect it to work? And in my opinion, the answer is yes. Yeah. A lot of people have Mavics. I think it's the number one drone out there right now. The coolest thing about this is I promise you, if you get these goggles and you put this on, you're going to re-experience your Maverick in a way you've never done before. It's going to make you a better pilot. It's going to make your experience even better. It's also going to give you the ability to inspire other people to go in the hobby and give them the best experience possible with the best clarity. So we're going to say this. It sounds like this is a paid advertisement. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got these products sent to us. We have our honest opinion. The only negative thing I can say about this is going back to narrow-headed people like me, you're going to get a little bit of light leak. 
Beyond that, it's been a great experience. We're hoping that you guys have a great experience. If you're gonna be flying with these, we wanna see your comments, we wanna see your feedback, and also if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see us do with this, we're eager to find out. Yeah, if we missed a feature or something, leave a comment below. Um, please subscribe if you wanna see more content like this, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. See you next time.